You would have heard and used these words like distance, speed, acceleration in your daily life. But in grade 9 subsequent chapters, we are going to learn them scientifically. For those of you who wish to pursue a career in science, this is the beginning of a very, very important stage. These are very interesting topics. And we'll start learning them with the concept of motion. Let's look at motion with the help of this example. So there is a race event in this stadium and you are sitting right over here. Imagine, just imagine this to be a real race event. All these runners in front of you, they are running towards the finish line. The person who's coming, about to come first, let's call him runner number one because he's about to come first. The guy just behind him is runner number two. And these two guys who are mostly likely going to lose the race, but they're running at the same speed, runner number three and runner number four. Let's assume that they're running at the same speed. I know that doesn't happen in a real race event. At a real race event, there is always a small difference, even if it is for 0 0.0001 second, even if it is for the last two spots. You see, because no one wants to come last, no one wants a banana. Okay, now I want to ask you this question. You can obviously see that all the runners, they are moving. They are running, so they are moving, they are in motion. But the question is, are you moving? Are you in motion? Some of you might think no. So, let's zoom out. You are sitting in the stadium. The stadium is in a city. The city is on planet Earth, which is spinning and revolving. So, if everything around us is just moving all the time, how do we really start talking about motion? How do we try and understand motion? We need to have a simpler way of looking at it. We need to have a common viewing point. Or we can call it a reference point. Remember the words, reference point. A reference point is also referred to as origin. Now let's look at some examples. Let's say if the reference point was at the sun, which means somebody is actually observing from the sun. So the earth is obviously in motion. But you and all the forerunners which are on earth are obviously also in motion. If the reference point is you, who are sitting in the stadium and watching the race event, for you, obviously, the runners are in motion. But hey, the sun is also in motion through day and night. Isn't that interesting? But right now, we just want to study the motion on Earth, so let's forget the sun. Let's just choose another reference point. How about your friend who is just sitting next to you? Now, you and your friend, you're just sitting and watching the match. You're not running, so we can call you a stationary body. All the four runners who are running around, we can call them as moving body. What we want to do now is we want to take a stationary body as a reference point and a moving body as a reference point and try and see the motion around. So let's pick your friend who is a stationary body. This is very easy. To your friend, you are obviously at rest and all the four runners are moving. Let's look at this on a table. With respect to your friend, you are at rest and all the four runners are in motion. Okay, now before changing our reference point to the moving body, I want you to look at these three pictures. Picture number one, this is at the beginning of the race. You can see that all four runners are at the start line. This is picture number two. This is roughly at the half time. You can see one and two are marching ahead and three and four are much behind. But they are still together because they are running at the same speed. Picture number three. This is almost at the end of the game. One is about to win the race, two is slightly behind, but three and four, they are still running at the same speed. Now let's move our reference point to our moving body. Let's pick runner number three. Let's see how all the other people are behaving with respect to runner number three. The first two runners, runner number one and two, they were with runner number three at the start of the race, but now they are clearly far ahead. So they are in motion. What about runner number four? You can see in all the three pictures, every time runner 3 looks to his right, runner 4 is always there. So runner 4 is always at rest. What about you and your friend? Let's look at the last two pictures again. In picture number 2, you and your friend are sitting a little ahead of runner number 3. In picture number 3, you and your friend are sitting a little behind runner number 3. So clearly, with respect to runner number 3, you and your friend are both in motion.